are the nigga who tells you to do them if we know that. Oh no, no. This is not a I feel lifeless. I'm done going out. It's two o'clock and I'm just now getting the motivation to like actually get up. This stuff closes here at five, which means we have three more hours of daylight. My stomach hurts. And the thing is last night wasn't even giving. I'm standing at the bar trying to get a drink and I'm like, I'm being bumped every five seconds. And it's one thing when a girl bumps you, but when a man, bump shoe so by the time we got home it was like i want to say like 4 30. my stomach i mean all night it was just like boom, 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 boom. it was like it was like somebody was beating the i'm up on drums on my stomach so i didn't sleep well and i just felt very like drained and the plans for today tentatively because we're still trying to get out this door. We want to go to the Apartheid Museum and then we want to go back to the Nelson Mandela Square to just see it during the day. <clears throat> okay, it's currently 2.36. We are finally dressed and ready. I think we already about to get, I really don't know what's going on right now, but <laughs> our Uber is outside. We just made it to the Apartheid Museum. Taking photos is prohibited. We're about to get our ticket. I'll just give you guys a debrief on how everything goes and anything you need to know. Today? <laughs> I'm done. I just want to oh. get you, you acting a fool. <laughs> If you come to Joburg, definitely come to the Apartheid Museum, but do not come two hours before they, or an hour before they close like we did. At least give yourself a good three hour time block because it's really huge and it's, it's a lot to see, but I feel like also you can get lost because there's so much and it's like doors on top of doors, but there's a lot of like interactive videos as well. And a lot of good information. I will come back. Yeah, now we're waiting on our Uber. Of course it started raining and we don't have an umbrella. I'm really not gonna be doing too much walking cause I don't feel well still. Yeah, and my feet hurt. I don't know what's going on with my feet, but they just, they're like, just give me a break today. That is so true. Yeah, so I like to teach my guests how to greet in Zulu. Okay. Uh, I would really appreciate Sabuna. that. Oh, Sabuna. we already know. <laughs> Sabona. Okay. So Sabuna. whenever we really, really like uh, appreciate, if when you say Sabona, they're gonna say Yebo, and then you can ask them and say Gunjani. Gunjani. Gunjani is how are you? Good. The money that you guys paid, it's not that it's all coming to me. I have an NGO as well whereby I help guys with drug abuse. Okay. There's a huge drug here in South Africa which is called Nyaupe. It's a mixture of heroin, um, marijuana, a lot actually in one. Mm. You smoke it three times a day, 365 days. And it's really hitting the youth in the township. I had peers that I went to high school with and most of them are now smoking their drug. We're gonna go to Clip Town. Clip Town is where we find the Freedom Charter of South Africa, as well as the informal settlement. So we're gonna take a little walk around the informal settlement, just for you guys to get um, a real experience. They told us that there is power failure because too many people have connected, connected you know. But now it's summer, it's hot. No one has plugged a heater <laughs> or anything. Namibia, our neighboring country. Are you kidding? They so don't you, have... send, you send power to them? Yes. But all parts of, of uh, South Africa don't have yes. it? Yes, just imagine. 
As y'all heard, we're not able to film inside, but y'all, this was so interesting. So Mandela lived here between 1946 and 1962. His wife lived here. And you just basically get to learn about his family, see all these photographs. I definitely recommend. Soweto, Soweto. Mandela. Mandela. Tutu. Tutu. Asese. Asasa. Asese. Asese. Asasa. Welcome. Welcome. Africa. Africa. I love being black. I love being black. Let go of one dog, and then the school children stoned it to death, and then that's when the police started to open fire. Meaning, a life of a dog was more wow. important than the life of a black child. Wow! So it started. It started from here. I'm gonna break this down in a voiceover for y'all because this part was so important, and I want to make sure that y'all understand what was being said. So in 1948, shortly after apartheid, they introduced about 150 new laws and all of those laws were specifically designed to affect black people. And I'm so glad that we went to the apartheid museum before this tour because it gave me so much context about what we were about to see. I recommend doing that. So everything here symbolizes something very important from the story of Hector Peterson. If you aren't familiar with the story, basically in 1983, there was supposed to be a peaceful protest with the students from a school, right? Hector Peterson was a schoolboy. They just got out of school. They were protesting. And next thing you know, uh, the policeman let go of one of their dogs. And the dog was literally about to attack the students. So the students picked up rocks and started throwing it at the dog. And the dog ended up dying. Once the dog died, oh, the policeman were livid and they started shooting, basically saying like the life of a dog was more important than the life of a black child. And once Hector was shot, he fell and his sister and the other person in the photograph actually were like helping carry him and pick him up. Our guide told us that the photographer literally had to flee town because they wanted him arrested and killed for airing out this type of publicity. That's how you know they knew they were wrong, but this was literally just the truth of what was going on at that time. The water that's flowing down symbolizes the tears that were shed, and it's continuously flowing because of the thousands of families that are still being affected to this day. The water then passes through the gaps and reaches the other side, and that symbolizes washing away the blood that was spilt in this area. And then you can see there's a bridge here and that symbolizes water under the bridge as we're moving towards a different time and then if you look inside the water you'll see these rocks and that symbolizes the weapons that the students had to protect themselves against the police officers and their guns once it became a violent protest. These rocks symbolize the different ages of the students that were protesting. So there were all different ages, but the youngest was eight years old. As I was telling you guys that we have uh, local taxis as well as taxis that are going to town. If you are going local, just stand by the road and then you point down like this. Mm -hmm. So that one means local. But if you're going to Johannesburg CBD, which is town, you just point up, which that one will cost you like a dollar. When it's been a few hours, when it feels like days. Only been days, but it feels like months. When it comes for you, only go like once. That's a lot of work, but you know, do it like this. A lot of work. It's a lot of work, but I'll do something else. <laughs> this is the DS. Yeah. Then you have to take the thing. You lazy to do. This one is It's just like yeah. How long does it take to make it? Take these? a lot of time, my baby. <laughs> oh, those are cute. I don't know where I'm wearing. Yeah. Okay. So should I get earrings to match this? I look like a tourist. Yeah, like I just went to Soweto and bought this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Okay. Let's hey, go. Hey, I want to send a message for people from the US. This is your home. If you want to come, you can come. And don't forget that we love you. One love. One love. Yeah. Oh, right. Now it's lunch time. What is chocolate? So this is mixed vegetables. This is mashed potato. That's grilled chicken. This is beef stew. Beef sausage. This is tripe. The intense dance of sheep. 
A what? Sheep. 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 y'all we're back from our tour this was such a great tour i'm gonna put um his name is k i'm gonna put k's contact information below if you come to Joburg and you want to do a soweto city tour 100 percent recommend booking him it includes drop off and pickup and a lot of other tours they don't do the drop off and pickup we bought so much stuff y'all we bought so much stuff like i literally have like a whole bag worth of stuff that we bought but like honestly i can't even be mad at it because it's like it's going to the community it's going to our people you know i just feel like when you're spending money for that reason the money doesn't count so i'm glad that i was able to help out where i could i would say and definitely recommend bring some cash they do take card for everything but you do want to make sure you're tipping i was not able to get my hair done today because the tour lasted up until about five we just got back so all the braiding shops are closed so hopefully i'll be able to get it done tomorrow because we leave in two days if you are not subscribed make sure you hit the subscribe button because y'all we're going to cape town so i can't wait to vlog cape town i've never been there this will be my first time going and i'm really excited we'll see how that goes and i'll check in with y'all later you are one to retire with my love. See, I didn't think you could do, they make me know.